my name is Nikita. Um, as I said before, I'm not so good in English, so I'm sorry for this. Um, so uh, uh, the topic is uh, how to move from outsource to product development, as I said before. Um, I'm start as a product manager in the zeros, it <laughs> um, but uh, I have a problem with the delivery, so uh, we started a, a kind of uh, Scrum Guides company in Russia called Scrum Track, and then work for eight years as a consultant, uh, and I have a lot of experience of doing Agile and being Agile and so on and so on. Um, now I'm working October. October it's a product and uh, design service design company. We help uh, large companies to create new products. So and uh, what I call the product source is a kind of service that we try to deliver to those companies. And I thought that um, uh, it will be useful to tell how to improve. Uh, the experience of outsourcing with uh, you know this op op product management stuff. Um, do you know what is it? Um, yeah, uh, it's uh, sorry for for this point, but uh, it's a pie diagram of how uh, how uh, it's a structure of uh, uh, Ukraine market. And uh, this part is a uh, outsource, and this part is a product and in-house development. And this is, a, um, I don't know, but it, you know, it uh, looks bad. No, not why it's why it's bad. Why it's bad? So, <laughs> sorry. So why why so what? Yeah, um, it's uh, sustainable until something. So I try to invent another one, Matrix Two and Two. Uh, another consulting matrix, yeah. So and um, when I think why outsource, it's not a good option. So I. F from business perspective, um, I try to create those. You know how you uh, concentrate on cash making. So when you're selling people, it's very fast to uh, to uh, make cash. So, but it uh, means nothing from you know a value adding perspective to the country, to the company, to the economy of the uh, of the country where do you live. Um, and there are another one axis. It's uh, about s stable or unstable stuff, as Tim said. So it looks like outsource is pretty stable and uh, more focused on cash making because you know um, old stuff. It's you know like slavery. Um, it's more like you know. Uh, uh, gladiators body shop when you take a slaves and uh, just train it a, a little bit and uh, try to sell it, uh, sell it a little bit more exp expensive way um, so of course you have a product um, something that can generate profit more sustainable but why people do not start products I'm, I'm just don't talking about new technologies. That's rocket science for us for, for now. Uh, so why, why, why nobody, based on this pie diagram, tries to create products here? Um, the kind of what kind of? Yeah, yeah. I draw today. Very uh, specific diagrams and charts. It shows that <laughs> um, 
So you have very high risk to create a new product, you know, from a, um, uh, you have to have a capital for that. You have to be uh, sure that it will work. Um, and uh, from this perspective, oh, I don't like this stuff. From this perspective, uh, outsource looks like a very good and easy way to enter the market. You know, uh, it's uh, it's a kind of oil. You know, if you have it in a country, you are lucky enough to sell it and export. Uh, and uh, if a demand if demand is high, you uh, you can cr uh, do a plenty of money from this until until uh, you don't have any competitor. Uh, and the, as I said, the, the worst news is that it's uh, do not create any value on the local market. So you just sell it, and it's gone. So and the problem, the same with the oil. The oil can't reproduce by itself, as you know. We have a uh, uh, a lucky time and good time when uh, we have a good, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, mass institutions that gives us opportunity to create uh, good developers. But uh, looks like it's doesn't come better and better from. <laughs> um, so what we can do to change this stuff? How to uh, move from outsource to products. I know that uh, there are a lot, kind of a few companies uh, that try to create being outsource, trying to create product like EPAM and, and Luxoft, etc. And uh, they failed because if you are a good engineer it's, and you are good in outsource, it doesn't mean that you are good in products. And this is a problem of this transition. Um, so what we decided to do is create a kind of service that gives opportunity to add value uh, to the customer as a from product management perspective. And uh, uh, on another hand, uh, to have an opportunity to learn how to make these products. Um, so that's what we call outsource. It's, it's a kind of business partnering between vendor and customer uh, where we equally involved in business development of this stuff. Um, I tried to make this talk maybe a year ago in uh, Lviv. Um, and everybody said to me, ha, huh, nobody uh, hear us. Uh, so our customers don't like to uh, talk with us like a partners, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but um, there are key uh, minds and points that we should change before it. So first of all, so it, uh, project success very relates on how it starts. If you start it as a, you know, just simple agile team, and uh, in the middle of the project you start and say, hey, hi guys, what about our metrics? What about uh, making money from this product? So you shut up, just do your job. What is your velocity? Where is your estimates? And so on and so on. So, um, first of all, when you're trying to work uh, as an outsource, it's a mindset that you have a customer satisfaction feeling, you know? So your customer have to be happy and you don't care how it relates to the product or projects that you do. Because, they, you know, he said you uh, change, uh, so that prioritize, prioritize, pri prioritization is changed. Oh, you're okay, we're agile, who cares? And them, you sh uh, you should focus that your 
product and your company and uh, uh, your product, it's a customer's product. And uh, uh, your contract uh, relates and uh, um, affects on the customer success. So you should think about how you, uh, how you can understand what is a you know, success for this problem. Another one thing that sounds strange uh, for an uh, outsource company. So someday we work, and I will tell one of the cases that we have. Uh, we said, no, we uh, do not agree with your uh, roadmap. Um, and uh, it booms magic. It, Say, they said, oh, we're searching for, for, for a vendor that will argue with us about product strategy. Because, you know, it's very hard to create product when you're feeling alone. And when your uh, vendor, maybe it's very good in delivery, uh, still works like your hands or, or legs, you know, but not, not a part of your, br of, of your brain. Another one option that we should check. Um, I know this, all this tendering process to, uh, to create a new uh, contract. So just it, this product source stuff doesn't fit as a regular development. You should try to, you, you never can win through, uh, you know, this uh, our, um, you know, price per, per hour uh, rate in this case. You know, when you're competing with guys who are selling, uh, you know, development team and you are trying to show that you have, a, you know, more competence uh, in a, uh, product development and so on, it's like, uh, what is the average rate in Ukraine for a developer? 35? Of course, uh, you say it's... Yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, so, <laughs> for friends. <laughs> okay, um, um, so it looks like it can be a more expensive service, but it will compete with the companies that uh, uh, sell uh, just agile uh, development service. So just try to... Uh, go through, you know, business budget, not development budgets. You know, just try to find a business leader from, from the uh, customer side and talk about more about product consult consultancy. Another one thing. Uh, so we should change this stuff about gathering requirements and uh, talk more about co-creation, you know, co-design, co co-everything. Co um, when we're talking about, you know, requirements, that, that means that your customer already knows that you need to, to build. Now, of course, there are uh, backlog stuff with change management inside. Um, but uh, when we're talking about co-creation, it's uh, uh, about uh, where we start together, you know, from the problem or from the features or, I don't know, for, you know, from tasks and so on. So we should, uh, to catch, we, we need to catch uh, the moment when idea just come up to the customer hat and work with it. Um, everybody knows this pie diagram. No, nobody knows. Yeah, it's uh, pretty old. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and this pie drunk, uh, diagram, uh, so it's uh, appears at uh, 20, 
20, yeah, 2002, uh, and it's uh, still the, uh, didn't change. And the uh, point is, um, your position as a company uh, looks like, you know, customer know about his new product no more than you when you start this project. You should know this. He can be an expert in, uh, in the business domain and so on, but it doesn't help him to achieve better than you those goals. From our perspective, it's better not to be an expert from this uh, domain because you're more open-minded and, and can create more value for this, uh, uh, for this customer. We work with the banks and we never uh, did banks before. We now we work uh, with uh, uh, consumer electronics uh, stores and we've never been good in uh, consumer electronics stores. But it's, uh, what, uh, what we do is uh, just uh, starting to understand together from just a rookie uh, position uh, how this business works, and we see uh, problems better than our customer, and it can be a good position for you. And the next uh, um, big thing, it's more about tools. Everybody knows uh, about uh, uh, iteration zeros, iteration zero, everybody know, somebody, of course. So, uh, what happened on iteration zero? Yep. Something. Planning. Yeah. Uh, decompositions for first print. Blah blah blah. So, what we do just to try to understand in so. We don't try to show that our customer dump, but we try to uh, be sure that he understands what the prob problem he's solving. And we start with the business modeling, just to be sure that uh, uh, we are fit with uh, customer segments or and these customer segments relates to some problems in these customer segments, and so on, so on, so on. So it's a first sketch for product illusion. It will never come true because everything changes, you know. After that, we start this standard. What we do in the iteration zero, it's a try to uh, create more knowledge about this business domain. Uh, there was uh, a workshop about design thinking. It's pretty good stuff, and uh, it's more focused about empathy. How do you understand how people live now? Less more uh, about uh, what we sh should do. And this is how it works for this, for example, for this project. When uh, we start, it's it's consumer electronics uh, store. I don't know. Do you have it in Ukraine? It's Mvideo in Russia. So um, they start a project. They call the real time dealing, and the idea was uh, that if uh, we will give a tablet to a consultant in the in the store. Uh, and uh, he can compare prices between uh, competitors. Uh, it will give an opportunity to sell more uh, stuff. Um, what we do, we, uh, we said, are you sure that that is the best way to raise uh, sales rates in the, uh, in the store? They, they said, uh, we don't know, but we have only one idea how to do this. So. We say, let's start to understand how stuff works. You know, how uh, how people feel when they 
trying to be aware that they want to buy something or how they do uh, how do they feel when they uh, just in the store uh, what they feel and how they behave uh, after the uh, moment that they buy something and uh, we spend a month to work like a consultant sale consultant inside the store we uh, do a lot of spectating how people work, etc., etc., etc. After that, we generate a lot of problems in this, you know, narrative use case. Gather all the team, uh, and when I'm saying all the team, it's uh, 50 percent uh, from customer side and 50 percent from our side, um, and. It, they try to figure out what problems feels more important to raise uh, only one metric that was in a uh, project passport for this real-time dealing project, uh, raising sales. Um, and uh, we find uh, that we have uh, to, it, it's a good idea to use a tablet, but it's not about comparing price and showing prices. Uh, it's about can you leave uh, a tip for a consultant, for example, creates more value and the more emotion uh, to return back to the, this uh, uh, store or and and do one more uh, purchase and so on. So what we do on the uh, iteration zero, it's not about planning, it's about to understand and validate what product should be on the next stages. Another one very important stuff that uh, in the first months, it's very strange, but first months, uh, half of our uh, product backlog, it's uh, creating a framework for metrics just to understand, are we doing well? Because there is a no, uh, you know, a point to create mo a lot of features. And uh, if you uh, see that metrics raising without any, uh, you know, coding, um, this is a, you know, good stuff. Um, I have a different story about uh, um, a mobile banking app. So. One day we uh, just to decide to change design without any change in UX or new features, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we release it. Uh, we have a, a huge blaming of the product, but uh, who cares? Uh, so uh, new registra uh, registrations comes too, and we understand. So we should invest more. Uh, in uh, you know PR, less features, and this is a one of a, an example because uh, a lot of projects uh, start with uh, you know it's time to do MVP, and uh, and maybe on the second third uh, uh, release you thought hmm what about metrics, so good idea to have these metrics uh, on the first stage, as there. Uh, it, this dashboard comes when we have only regist registration uh, feature, just to create. Can uh, so we just uh, trying to understand. Uh, are do do uh, consultants in the store use this tablet? Because the first hypothesis was uh, uh, something about uh, maybe phone works better. You know. <laughs> Um, another one thing that uh, we should change um, there are companies that are trying to work like a partners between you know customers and uh, and the ven vendors uh, but uh, some of they try to push uh, you know this uh, profitability stuff forward and uh, this is what kills every single product that starts this way. Um, 
I'm very sorry about next slide because I, it's in Russian. But the point is, when you to trying to launch a product, there are only one single metric that you should focus on. And when you start your product, the first one, it's a, called empathy. Uh, it's uh, not about money, but do they say something like, wow, I want to use it more and more. And it's not about money still. But you, you can try to monetize it, but it works pretty bad because there is no customers inside. The next part is called like stickiness or uh, uh, metrics based on you know growth of your customer uh, base. Um, and uh, now we are talking about do we create features that helps us to raise this metric? And after that, we use a virality. Do this, all of these people can recommend this product to others? And only on the stage four, we are talking about how to mon monetize this uh, product. After that, every product dies, like a, every, you know, <laughs> every creature in the world. But uh, the bottom line is, you should talk with a customer uh, as an advocate of, uh, you know, a pro of product. Uh, and uh, it's uh, very often just uh, saying that we do not need to uh, monetize it for the next three months. Because, it, you know, it depends. When you, when you are trying to uh, ask for a dollar, for the new app that leaves, I don't know, maybe two months. It's strange for, for a customer to, to pay for that. You know, with this all MVP stuff, it's uh, in first two months, it's real, really shitty. So you should be aware of that. And as one thing that I want talk, to talk with you, um, it's a difference between ready for deploy and uh, ready for value cre creation. Because um, it depends on how your team behave uh, in this situation. There are two, do you know about Kano analysis? Oh, of course you do. You are just a smart guy. <laughs> you, you A boy. <laughs> A plus. Um, so when we work with a customer, um, we of course we have uh, engineers, we have uh, testers, etc., etc., etc. But uh, the first thing that we do is uh, try to um, keep understanding from the customer perspective that it's okay that uh, engineer now do you know some kind of research stuff or understanding uh, what's the next one big thing that we should build to, to make this product better. Uh, uh, and uh, when someone asking why you do not deploy last week something, you said, so we just do not define something that we should build. And uh, this is very important thing that Number one rule here is a uh, less code with maximum profit. It's a better way to create products. In ideal world, we have to not to write a code and uh, have a profitability. <laughs> um, and uh, another one thing that we discovered that's very important for outsourcing companies that uh, release, it's not about, you know, something to, to deploy. Uh, it's more about can you write something in, uh, your, you know, blog or your, you know, lovely newspaper. And uh, this is a kind of mindset that you should provide to your customer. 
And the last one more thing. So this is a story how you can improve your outsource and uh, those activities can uh, uh, give you opportunity to gain experience in product management with, with a customer. Um, so how to start the product? Um, in our case, when you work this way, when you uh, talking about business models with customers, uh, talking about how to design service, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you always see, uh, you know, we call it product chips. You know, you know, when you use an X, you have a chips. Uh, some great ideas uh, that uh, that. Uh, not in the, in the focus of the project, but you now understand the uh, business domain. For example, uh, you know pretty well how retail stores works. Why should I do, shouldn't do something in this, in this domain? Um, and when you're uh, providing those service, you always have those ideas uh, that, um, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, useful for the customers, but uh, they don't care about the you know IP and so on and so on because it's not a core business for them. And this is opportunity for you to start do those things. Um, that's it. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you.